So recently, I got deeper into the world of Coco and I wanted to experiment and see that does it really make a difference on your final big product like brownies on what type of cocoa you use and I'm experimenting between natural cocoa powder and Dutch processed cocoa powder. Natural is what you usually get at the store so anything from Hershey's or Fry's most likely what you have in your pantry if you're wondering would be natural cocoa. Dutch was a bit harder to find and I had to Sherlock my way to getting the brand that I can use for this video. And while the prices I found for both these varieties were about the same, there are a couple of visual differences in the actual powder itself, in how it interacts with the ingredients as you're creating the batter, as that batter is baking, and some major differences at the end when you're about to enjoy your treats. Let's get into it. Now, just visually, the Dutch cocoa powder just has a deeper color. And it usually also tends to have deeper, richer, almost dark chocolatey like flavor as well. And most of these differences are actually a direct result of the cocoa powder being alkalized and essentially being treated by potassium carbonate. And the richness also comes from the fact that it just has a higher fat content, usually between 20 to 22 percent. Now natural cocoa powder usually has lower fat percentages. The fancier brands, the higher end brands would have something as high as 20, 21 percent, but the ones like Fry's or Hershey's would hover in the 10 to 12 percent range. And also the natural cocoa is not alkalized. So the flavors just tend to be on the tarty, bitter kind of side. And to me, it just reminds me of that classic cocoa flavor because I guess I'm just used to having natural cocoa. Some varieties though, if processed using high quality cocoa beans, can result in some fruity notes in the actual powder. So what you've been seeing me make over here is my espresso brownies recipe. And if you haven't tried it yet, it is to die for. Now I am making two different batches, one with Dutch process and one with natural cocoa. And we're gonna see at the end how different are the two products. And will you find out if it's worth your time and your dime to go out and looking for the special variety, aka the Dutch process. And you can almost tell right away the differences in how the cocos are reacting and displaying their differences in the batter. You can just tell them apart. The natural one just seems to be muddier, darker. And the dust one has almost like a chocolate fondue kind of look. It just, it's like very inviting. I almost want to dip into it. But these visuals don't really matter if the final taste is not blowing your mind. And while the color differences from earlier did carry over to the final big product, it was the flavors that really blew my mind. And this is why. Because you know, while both these brownies are amazing, while the cocoa one, right? The natural cocoa one, like yeah, brownies, when I smell these ones, this is the Dutch process one. I'm like, yeah, brownies, you know? Like it just, it's screaming chocolate. Well, this is screaming cocoa and it's been like, yeah, it's going to be awesome. This is like, let's go, you know, this is let's go kind of brownies. This reminds me of brownies that I've had um, growing up from the store, from the bakeries. And it just looks like it too. Like, look at that, that crust and the color that's on top. Hope you can see that, right? Like that, that, that looks good. Also, they're both fudgy. There's fudginess in both of them. And it's almost like a perfect mix for me between cakey and fudgy brownies. That's what I like. But just the layers of the dark chocolatey richness that I'm getting from the Dutch process kind, it's just, it's worth it. So if you're ever thinking, 
Should I get the Dutch processed? Or should I stick with the regular cocoa? It's not even a question. Just get the Dutch processed. Use your regular cocoa in like your hot chocolate mixes. But even then, maybe make a mix. Maybe make a mix of Dutch process and your regular cocoa for your hot cocoa. But for everything else, if you can find it, you can stock your pantry. Dutch process is the way to go. And I'm glad I did this experiment. Because now I know what I'm gonna do moving forward. So let's finish up my natural cocoa really quickly so I can make this permanent move. This was the battle of the ingredients. Let me know what you wanna see next. This was fun and I'll see you on the next one. See ya.